I am going to um, feel some questions that came in via Instagram when I said I was doing a bass rig video. Synth tones. Mm -hmm. I put this in my mouth. So the Deep Impact is my favorite. Um, that's when I do it myself, mixing the octave in the envelope. At home I have piles of other synth pedals, but these are just favorites. There are some on the future impact. So check this out for a second. No, really, check this out for a second. I love, by the way, playing with my fingernail, pretending I'm holding a pick. And I can throw it out to the crowd and there's nothing there. Because it actually sounds better. I only use a pick because I'm supposed to, or my fingers sometimes, or slapping, but the, the fingernail is best. So, synth sounds. Um, the future impact, which is like the deep, deep impact, but digital. Um, that's um, it's a pretty standardy, very synthy sounding moogie whatever sound. This one, I might use in um, Martian Monster. So. Some of these synths sounds out a lower octave, so I have to play higher up. Um, like if I go back to the Deep Impact for a second, which I use for uh, Boogie on Reggae Woman, how about I use a real pick? It works well to play up high, but I can't go down low in the normal range without it getting too muddy. So that's why on the future impact, this is calling up something called preset 70. Yep, same problem. That was the one I was just playing. So 83. This one, very vocal sounding. This one, um, I can play in low octaves because it's not adding an even lower octave. This is supposed to sound like, um, sort of like um, house, bassy, drummy. Um, there was a question online about um, what's the sound that I like to use, but I don't use it during the show. Uh, wouldn't that sound cool during something? Doesn't sound cool during something. It only sounds cool now. It's another distortion with some envelope whatever modulating from the future impact. Okay, let's go to more questions. Lost it. There was a question, which effects, pedal, <laughs> which effects pedals are open portals or open up? portals. Now, that means to the cosmos, to the muse, to infinity. And that's a hard question. Um, I mean, I'll go for an hour in the middle of a deep jam and not use any effects pedals, but um, mm, I, I do come back to Echo Space of God for portal, for one kind of portal, ambient portal. But I'm gonna come back again to that favorite Chim Chim. It's hard to do Chim Chim with a little effects pedal because you need four pitch delays. And even this one, which is the Eventide Eclipse, doesn't have four, it only has two. But with the Chim Chim, they can, and it sounds like bump bada dump. Sounds like there's only three more pitch delays, a different frequency, a different note at a different time interval, but there's actually eight. They're doubling each other up. So I can slow down the tempo. Much too slow. Oh, Michael, find a good tempo. just opened, but only a crack on the seven and a half floor. Okay, so lately, there's this questions about Trey getting these bassy sounds. He'll use the M5, what is it, Line 6 M5 Growler especially, and what do I like to play along with that? That's a really good question. Because at first I think, okay, I could make a guitar sound because he's sounding like a bass. So I turn on, how do I do this, my pitch thingy. When I put, hit, this, hit this pedal down, it 
brings the octave down an octave and up an octave. But I'm thinking about the upper octave sounding like guitar. And then I can give it some distortion. Do I like that distortion from the Fishman or do I like the Sans Amp? No, I like the Fishman. The Sans Amp is hiding down here and the Fishman's up here. See, everything happens in loops. No, that's not what I do. It doesn't work. What works better, I find, is to let there be two basses. Trey's Growler, I don't want to be too similar. It's definitely a synthy sound. Um, so I have to pick something that will match it and be not the same. Uh, um, let's say, what if I went to this vocal Devox on the ninth house? Ratchet it back a little. It's like a, and then add some octave to give it some thickness. Yep, matched it, nailed it. Uh, okay. Okay, Sleeping on Rainbows asked, have I tried other power tools? No. <laughs> There's gotta be a chainsaw around here somewhere. Uh, I would like to try other power tools. Hey, I should try Fish's vacuum. And put the whole vacuum next to the pickup and see if we get a vibration. Will do. Rhode Island Stone Walls asks what changes were made for the tour. The bass sounds thicker and heavier. I like the sound of that. It's all in your mind. I, I think that, like, Bass players who I've admired, who sound so great with their bass through their rig, and I've taken their bass and played it through their rig when they let me, and it suddenly sounds like little old me. <laughs> sometimes thick and heavy, sometimes thin and light. <laughs> Depending on how many carbs have been taken in. Anyway, um, yeah, but a lot has to do with what Gary's doing. I think Gary's doing a great job, and now that he's mixing from the trailer, I think he's actually able to dial in even with more fullness, accuracy, the sound in the front of house. Um, but for me, I really think it's in the mind is what I was trying to say. If I'm thinking fat and thick, which I, these players like that kind of thing. They like punch and oomph and fatness and thickness. And the more I think that, the more it happens. So that's honestly where I think, uh, between me and Gary, we got to think fatness, we got to think thickness and it'll happen. Okay, Mr. Gotchling, do Nikes give me a better tone than, than Vans? Let me just say one thing about that. I have one pair of sneakers I have not worn yet, ever, and it's on the tour bus. These are the Fluvogs that were made by George Clinton, designed by George Clinton, and every pair of sneakers is different from every other. What is that gonna give me that Nikes and Vans can't? I mean, that guy, if someone understands funk, that'll have to be the non-funk night. It'll be too on point. Like, oh, Mike, you're being too funky. You must have the George Clinton sneakers on. Can you just play jazz or something? Um, you don't need a big bass rig and with all this processing to sound amazing. Some of the best players, the best bass players I've ever seen have been with someone in a club with a single 15 inch speaker, no processing, no nothing, an old Fender bass and the most incredible sound and groove ever. However, since I'm spoiled and since I've done a good job of taking some of the sprawl away so it's controlled, I do get to have things like this where I have this effects pedal from Peter Paul and my high school band. Let's turn it on. It's the flanger. And I don't use it so you can hear it. I use it so it's subconscious and it swims a little and makes the bass frequencies fuller. And But it doesn't sound right on its own. So I have a whole other pedal, WMD, e parametric EQ. Now if I turn that off and just have the flanger, it's too loud. Suddenly it comes in, it's too loud too cutting. So I couple it on the same loop with that thing and I EQ it so it controls it. So I'm spoiled, have more stuff when I need it. Okay, Hot Dog Knight wants to know if I cut any frequencies to make more room for other instruments. No. <laughs> but I do cut frequencies when they are boomy and they're wallowing. Let's try a, let's try a little trick here. Um, let's try two tricks actually. First, I'm gonna let you hear the speakers. Um, flanger's still on, but that's okay. So one at a time on the speakers. Okay. This is just these ones. Just some low punch. Plus, I think we're getting some from 
Fishman's monitor. And then I bring in, actually just, let's do just these ones. It's that middle range where the bass notes are really speaking. And then just the top ones. And they do go pretty low for a tweeter. And you put them all together. And now I can't remember what the original question was. Yep, 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 you put them all together. Um, but I was going to make a point about uh, um, frequencies. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take away the frequency control that I've set up for this venue here um, and for some recent venues um, by just simply disabling. Okay, disable that one, disable this one. I have four different frequencies going. Okay, here's the bass with no EQ. Doesn't sound that different, huh? Let's take the flanger off. To me, it sounds too um, abrasive. Even with, with the earplugs out, I know it's too abrasive. So, this note in the middle, smack dab this way and this way of the bass, not very... Not very punchy sounding, it's wimpy sounding. So that's where I go to this range here. Bring that back on. You can hardly tell, but believe you me, it's important. And then, same with down here. So wimpy, it makes me wanna die. Bring that in. Still alive. Punch. It's a good venue, so. Um, and then, same down here. These are middle. They seem like they're all over, but they're middle. Bring that one back in. And finally, this lowest note ever. Like it sounds like it's there, but does it have the punch of that note? No, what if I wanna play this? Like, uh, let's see, um, Gula. Or any other song in B where I wanna go to a low B kind of goes away a little bit. And in context, it'll be even worse with the band playing. So crank it up 4 dB. Oh yeah, now we are swimming in the muck of low end. Anyway. <laughs> McJames19 asks, what venues the rig sounds the best at? You know, I think I can predict that and then it ends up being different. A venue that was horrible and echoey. SPAC used to always be really echoey, and then we got there and it was the best gig ever for sound. Um, so it can, it, it can go in both directions, um, but the man is always great. Um, places like the Gorge, or we just played in Bangor, if there's no roof over the people, it's gonna make the bass frequencies really punchy and controlled and clear and incredible. Sometimes it can be too dry without the resonance but Dix is great because there's no roof over the people, so it means a lot of punch and low end, but there are bleachers way over far away that create some resonance, so it's the perfect, um, the perfect compromise. Uh, there's a lot of good sounding venues, though, um, and anything could be dialed in um, with some work, so. Okay, Tommy Ballgame asks, what's the weirdest sound my bass rig um, can produce? Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see what we got. Um, I'll challenge myself to get weirder and weirder because I might have to start with medium weird. This thing here is making a... I don't know, maybe that's more trippy than, than weird. Um, and so that's a crystallizing sort of sound. Oh, I gotta get weirder, gotta get weirder, gotta get weirder. What's weird? <laughs> the flashback. Which one is the flashback? Oh, that, yeah. I think it might be, what is it? D Tommy Baseball? Tommy Ballgame. Tommy, I'm sorry, Tommy Ballgame that I called you Tommy Baseball. I know you weren't even talking about baseball, but a different kind of ball game. Okay, Tommy Softball. Um, weirdest sound might be that one where the actual expression pedal is built into the tiny metal knob. All right. <laughs> 
Okay, Mike Basso. Could that be Basso? Um, you know, I will mention that I found a, a, a magazine for people that do bass fishing, Bass Magazine, and it, it, the lead article was Trapped Without a Scale. And I thought, this is my magazine, even though I don't eat fish because I'm a vegetarian. Um, but to reel myself back in here, uh, Mr. Basso, uh, I really do like the Deep Impact a lot because it's organic sounding for a synth. Even, even when it's not, let's say, um, Boogie on Reggae Woman, even just to kind of sit there and... I saw one of these bass videos from Mike League from Snarky Puppy, and I got his phone number, and I said, Mike League, you seem affable. Can we be friends? You seem very affable in your bass video. And he said, okay, just dial 1-800-AFFABLE and you'll find me. Okay, anyway, deep impact. But I will say, let me just say, people are saying, what do you like to use? Um, for um, an, an effects pedal or two that always are gonna sound good in almost every situation, it's hard to beat these MXR octave and MXR envelope filter pedals. So the octave, of course I have to play higher. I, I turn down the knob, which gives me the two octaves down. That's just too hard to control. Just the thickness of going up higher. With my band, uh, I've written some songs. I just played Victim once. That has the octave divider or the octave pedal on the whole time. And then the envelope, which is that wah-wah kind of sound. I've had so many different envelope pedals, and the Mutron is the classic one, but I don't use that. People ask whether I still use the meatball, no. But the MXR is just the most reliable. It just sounds good in context. And I must say, uh, Mr. Basso, <laughs> that context is everything. Something will sound great right here and right now, and then the band plays, and all the low end leaves the bass while the effects pedal is on. Can't use it. Try to dial it in, can't dial it in. So if I know I want something to sound good and I put the envelope and the octave on, both from MXR, very reliable, it's quick and punchy. Um, I just wanna give one more example of something that I have discovered recently that I like when I'm here, just me and you, um, and I don't like in context. I've been trying context and it's been sucking. It's like, oh, that's not good. Let's speed up. Speed up even more, please. So doesn't that sound like it should be fun during a jam? No, because I turn it on and now the low end goes away and that fun sound of ping pong balls can hardly perceive. It just sounds like a stupid toy that's out of time and with the rest of the band. And I keep trying and I keep failing. Context is everything. Um, okay, I'm gonna just say, favorite new effects pedal is this, you know, I go through these videos online and then I copy some of my friends like Trey or whoever and I get this effects pedal that they've been having fun with. And then in context, it just doesn't sound good for bass or I can't get it to sound good and I have shelves of those I'm gonna have to get rid of. But one that I found recently, <laughs> Um, I did copy this from Trey, and I, I think <clears throat> he uses it in a different way than I do. But it's this synth pedal called the SY1. I don't even know where it is. <laughs> it's, right, it's right here from Boss. And what I like about it is it does these sequences. I like pedals that will make extra notes along with what I'm playing, but where that doesn't take away from the impact of the jam and of the bass sound. So, SY1. <laughs> And there's so many different uh, sequences, I guess sequencer you'd call it. Um, slow it down. This global temp, tap tempo is great. Come on, Michael. Elliot. Too slow. I can't get it fast enough. Damn it! But you know, the tough thing is too many choices. Like all I have to do is, there's, there's just for that kind of sequence, there's about 25 choices. Let's say I move it one notch, and it's way different. Or one notch in the other direction. Ooh, maybe I'll use that for the show, I like that. 
but it's low, so in the context of the band, it'd be hard to hear. I'll just leave it where it's at. That's my favorite new one, the SY1. Copied, everything's copied. Thank <laughs> you.